Good morning and welcome to Stapleford Salvation Army. This is a very special day in the Salvation Army calendar as we are celebrating Candidate Sunday, a day when we think of those people that God has called to serve him within the Salvation Army. But firstly, I would like to tell you what some members of our corps have been doing in this time of lockdown. Can you remember last week the theme was Blossom Where You Are Planted and these three ladies have certainly been doing that. I'm sure many of you this week have been celebrating the VE celebrations and I would like to acknowledge the hard work of three of our ladies, Margaret, Anne and Paula, who have been busily knitting, making bunting for the celebrations. Well done and thank you for enabling Stapleford celebrations to continue in the streets where you live. Hopefully we will be able to use the bunting again when we celebrate being able to worship in our hall. But our next message comes from Alfie who has a message for one of our soldiers but also for each one of us. Hello to everyone in the army. First I would like to say a happy birthday to my auntie Di. And we just want to say how much we miss you. We're all praying for you, hoping we are fit and well. And I just want to say thanks for staying at home in lockdown. We all miss you. Love, Alfie. Thank you, Alfie. But let us now come together and worship our Lord and Saviour as we sing, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our wonderful Saviour. to our meeting this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are welcome here. 
We acknowledge you as Elohim, because you are Father God. You are sovereign, you are Elion, the God most high, and you reign supreme. You're Yahweh, the great I am, the one true God. You are El Shaddai, God Almighty, the all-powerful one. We are aware that we are in your presence now, and we worship you. We give you praise from our lips and the love from our heart. So come by your Holy Spirit and be a part of all that takes place this morning. You are welcome here. Amen. Let us continue to worship God as we listen to our worship group as they sing the song, 10,000 Reasons. Now we have so much to thank God for, yes, 10,000 reasons and more. So please join in if you know the words.
today, as we celebrate Candidate Sunday, we consider God's calling on our lives, not only for officership, but any leadership responsibility within our core or our church. So is God speaking to you today? Listen and be alert to what God is saying to you. The Bible verse for Candidate Sunday is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and it says, so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Sunday in our territory and we welcome you here. We welcome you to William Booth College. We can't be with you today and so we invite you here to our home. My name is Major Julie Johnson and I'm the Assistant Territorial Candidates Director working with a great team in the Candidates Unit. This building's been here for a long time, for 91 years and for 91 years these steps have led men and women through those heavy doors as they responded to God's call for ministry within the Salvation Army. I remember the first time I walked up these steps and I was very nervous, I was very anxious, I was wondering who I was going to meet, what I was going to be asked to do, but there was an overwhelming sense of peace as I entered those doors. I was just 21 at the time, it was 40 years ago, so I'll let you do the maths. I still feel that peace now as I enter these doors. Not much has changed really, except now the doors are not heavy, they're electronic and they let you in freely. And I want you to take you through those doors just now as we enter into the assembly hall, another special place. But before we do, before you switch off thinking Candidate Sunday is not really for me and I don't connect with it, I just wonder if you just watch this short video. <laughs> Some of us might think that Candidate Sunday is not for us. It's for someone else, someone younger maybe, someone different, someone more confident. It's easy for us to get the wrong idea about how God calls people. We think about it as a solitary thing, and it can be, but think about this. Just as they say it takes a village to raise a child, maybe it takes a core to raise a candidate. And since core is just another word for body, what if the Holy Spirit uses many parts of the body to call one woman or man to become an officer or territorial envoy? Ask a hundred officers how they first felt their calling you might get a hundred different answers. Some will say it crept up on them slowly, a little more every day. Others were like Saul on the Damascus road, a bolt from the blue, suddenly they knew. Some will have wrestled like Jacob until they couldn't fight it anymore. Because all people are gloriously different, the way we hear a call to service can be as different as we are. In these days around Candidate Sunday, we all have a part to play. If it takes a core to raise an officer or a territorial envoy, it takes all of us to pray. Some of us to talk and encourage, and some of us to hear the call and to say, yes, tell me more. This might be for me. So you see, you really do have a part to play. You're part of the bigger picture. Now here is my sessional flag. I was a God's messenger and in the session from 1980 to 82, I always will be a God's messenger. And these flags around me represent hundreds of people who have been through college. And many of them now are serving as Salvation Army officers. 
your own core officers flag would be here. Pray for them in these days. Pray for the cadets of the messengers of the kingdom and messengers of grace who are currently in college as cadets. But we also want you to pray for those places and for those situations who currently have no spiritual leaders. We need to keep the flag flying. We need people to take up the challenge and respond to the call of God for ministry in the Salvation Army. The theme for this year's Candidate Sunday is Be Alert. We more than ever need to be alert to all that God is saying to us in these days. We need to be alert to all that's going on in our church, the Salvation Army, as we see the gaps and the situations and the places that need spiritual leaders. We need to be alert to the people who right now are looking for hope and answers to life's questions. We need to be alert and tuned into the voice of God. The first two verses from Colossians and the, the message translation is the key text that we're using for Candidate Sunday this year and it says this. So if you're serious about living this resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. I wonder, are you serious, as Paul says, about living this new resurrection life with Christ? Are you pursuing the things over which Christ presides? How are you responding to God? Cadets, they are people that have offered themselves to become officers of the Salvation Army, spend two years at William Booth College in training before they are commissioned and ordained as ministers of religion. And at present in the college are two sessions. Messengers of the Kingdom are the second year cadets who should be commissioned this July. Commissioning and ordination is the most significant event. It's held at Westminster Centre Hall and it's a very special time as you can imagine. And at present, as yet, nothing has been decided whether this will take place in July or even perhaps later. So this is a very unsettling time for the cadets, not knowing what the next few months holds for them. Will they be commissioned? Will they be able to take up their new appointments in July? And if some have children, where will they attend school in September? London or their new appointments? This is a picture I want to show you of the second year cadets, the messengers of the kingdom. But remember, behind each smiling face represents a person whose life is on hold and who needs our prayers. These will be the new officers in the Salvation Army. The other session in college are the first years, Messengers of Grace, and at present they should be on their three-month placement. So for them also, this is a very uncertain time for them and their families. This is a picture of them, so you can pray for them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bring before you the cadets in college. Firstly, the messengers of the kingdom who are waiting in eager anticipation to start the work for which you have called them to do as officers in the Salvation Army. Father, they've been given their appointments and now they wait for their commissioning to be released into your service. Heavenly Father, we know that these are uncertain times for us all. And today we pray that you will give the cadets in waiting peace in their hearts and to reassure them that you have everything in control. Nothing happens by chance. Let them see that this time in waiting as an extension of their training and they will look back on this time as a period of growth. We do pray that they will be released to undertake their new appointments very soon. And Father, we bring before you the messengers of grace as they also are waiting in uncharted waters. Bring peace into their hearts and spirits. And make their way clear to them and also to their leaders who are making these decisions on their behalf. Father God, we bring before your throne of grace each individual person in the photographs that we have just seen, each one experiencing uncertainty 
or perhaps anxiety. Please meet them now, right now, this minute, and give them your peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Let us now continue to worship God as we listen to a piece of music played by one of our bandsmen, Stephen Young. It's entitled, Jesus Help Me to Discover You. specifically calling them to a life of commitment and service. But how does God talk to you? We all hear God in different ways. Sometimes it's through a verse of scripture, a deep conviction that you know hasn't come from yourself. Sometimes somebody else recognises God's call upon your life, which perhaps that you've been ignoring. Sometimes it comes through the words of a song. So today, as you are watching, you may be thinking, well, I can't offer for officership. We know there are many of you that are able to offer for local leadership within your core, your community or your church. However, you know, sometimes we just stop listening to the promptings of God as we put up our own mountains as to why we can't offer to serve. Perhaps it's, I'm too busy, I'm too old, I'm not gifted in any area. So many excuses we can find if we look. But today I ask you to pray before God and ask him if there is a particular era or even a new ministry that he wants you to serve him in or to start and then to offer your time and your commitment to him. You know, God will continue to pursue you if he has put a call on your life and you will never feel fulfilled until you answer that calling. As I said, the theme for this morning is be alert and each of us need to do just that, to be alert to what God is saying to us today. Let us sing our next song together and reflect that sometimes we have to step out and dare to be a Daniel.
hope those of you with Timberwolves were joining in with that last item. And it also sets a challenge for our own Timber Brigade to perform it when we get back into our hall. But let us now listen to the ministry from the songsters, which will be followed by today's Bible reading, read by Esme Butcher. Bible reading is from Luke 5 verses 1 to 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the Sea of Galilee, the people were crowding round him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got in one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee and Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, 
do not be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats on the shore, left everything and followed him. Today, the message is be alert to God's voice, but then also to be obedient to what he says. Ruby, one of our young people, has learnt this lesson, and she's also learnt that obedience brings blessing. So let us listen to her wise words. I've had lots of fun this week. The best part was mattress surfing down the stairs. My favourite story in the Bible is jo Jonah and the whale. In the end, Jonah eventually obeyed God, which brought about great results. Thank you, Ruby. A reminder to us all from the story of Jonah that obedience always produces blessing. Well, as we've said, today is Candidate Sunday, when we've been looking at the call on the life of individuals to follow God and to be alert to what he is saying to each of us. But let's look at a person in the Bible who had to do just that, be alert to what was happening around him, and then had to make the decision and the choice of whether to be obedient to Jesus or not. In the scripture read this morning by Esme, Peter was faced with a life-changing decision. The outcome of his choice would determine his future. You see, Jesus had been preaching along the shore of the Lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee. The crowds were large. His ministry was growing. Word had spread about how he had healed those who were sick with various diseases. And on this occasion, the crowds were so great, Jesus had had his back to the water, and the people were still pressing in on him. Can you visualise it? Jesus being pushed further and further nearer the sea, and he had no place to go. And right near where all this was happening was Peter, the fisherman, who was also listening to Jesus. At the time, he was mending his nets in preparation for going back out on the lake later that evening. And I'd be thinking, if he was mending his nets, then he wasn't really fully concentrating. Most probably listening with like one ear open and the other somewhere else. Perhaps that is how it is for you this morning. But you see, the night before, Peter had been out fishing all night long and he'd caught nothing, not even one single fish. He'd been up all night pulling and dragging nets around a small, uncomfortable boat. And now all he wanted to do was clean his nets and go home and take a short nap so he would have the energy to get up and go back out that evening. But it was then, as he was mending his nets, getting on with life, doing what was necessary, that Jesus asked him a question. It must have taken Peter by surprise that suddenly this man should suddenly speak to him. Jesus asked Peter to allow him to enter his boat and to move it offshore a short distance so that he could continue to teach the people. And Peter agreed. You see, that was the first step towards obedience and to being alert to what was being said to him. After he'd finished the teaching, he then asked Peter to do something else. He said, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now, this next step was more difficult. Not only was Peter tired, but his friends were close by watching to see what he would do. And when Jesus told Peter to head out into the deep waters where he would catch a large draw of fish, they probably rolled their eyes. Here was a young rabbi whom they were sure knew nothing about fishing. And he was telling Peter, the master fisherman, what to do. Can you imagine John and James looking at each other thinking, oh no, what is Peter going to say? What would you have said? You probably know the ending to the story, so you might be inclined to say, oh, I would have raised the sails and headed out into the deep. But would you? Have you? When God has asked, called to you, asking that you would obey him, when you have perhaps felt tired or perhaps thought that you know best? You see, obedience looks different when he's asking us to do something that personally costs us more than we want to give. Scripture doesn't tell us whether Peter scanned the scene or looked to his friends for help. It just tells us one thing. He obeyed the Lord and stated, Master, I will do as you say and let down the nets. I can imagine the silence that fell on those who were on the shore as they watched Peter release the anchor, raise his sails and turn his rudder toward deep water. What motivated him to do this? You see, Peter didn't weigh up how it would benefit him. He didn't even look at the inconvenience. Something within him just wanted to do as he was being asked. 
You see, faith comes by hearing God's voice and responding in pure obedience. Peter was alert to Jesus' voice. He recognised that this man was no ordinary man. Have you had times in your life when God has asked you to do something and, well, it just doesn't make sense? And to go back out to fish during the heat of the morning did not make sense to Peter. No one weren't fishing then. It was hot and the fish went to the bottom of the lake, a place where the nets could not reach. At night, they were closer to the surface of the water. But Peter's obedience that day prepared him for obedience the next day and the days after that and for the years to come. Because you see, the fish were not available the night before, but the next day, in the heat of the morning, they were right where God wanted them to be. There are no coincidences with God. Nothing just happens. He always has a plan, and that plan reflects his ways. You see, if you want to walk in step with him, then you will learn how to be alert to what he is saying. The scripture in Luke told us that once the nets were down, they began to fill with fish to a point of breaking. Do you realise the miracle that took place? There was no fish the night before, but at a time when none should be present, the waters were teeming. There were so many that Peter had to signal for John and the others to join him. His boat was about to sink and he didn't know what to do. All he could utter were these words to the Saviour. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the cache of fish which they had taken. Not only was Peter at the hub of this miracle, but others drew near also. And you know, many times when we are obedient, those around us join in the blessing. I'm convinced that none of these men had ever seen so many fish in their nets at one time. The nets were bursting. The boats were about to sink. And Peter fell down on his knees and worshipped the Lord. Here is one truth on which you can stake your life. If Jesus asks you to do something, you can guarantee that without a doubt, a blessing will follow. Questioning, doubting, calculating, none of these build for the faith that he wants us to have and exhibit. This does not mean that we will never make a mistake. It means that the motivation of our heart, to the best of our ability, is set on obeying God. Remember Abraham, he left his home at God's instruction, not knowing where the Lord would lead. Moses went back to Egypt without knowing all that his new role as deliverer would involve. Esther approached the king, not knowing if she would lose her life. Rahab hid the spies who came to view the promised land. Mary heard the angel's voice as he said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And Peter said, I will do as you say and let down the nets. The Christian life requires obedience. You and I learn obedience. We are not born with the desire to obey God or anyone in authority. It's a learning process. Peter did not instantly know to obey Jesus, but what he did know was that there was something about Jesus. And that something drew him near enough for him to know that this man was not just a preacher. And then when his nets filled to overflow with fish, he dropped to his knees and proclaimed, Lord. You see, one of Satan's traps is that God places an opportunity before us. And suddenly we question whether it's actually him. We start to analyse the situation from a human perspective and put fleeces out. Well, if this happens, then I'll know God is involved. If I get this piece of information, then it is his will, and then I will go forward. But you see, that's not obedience. If Peter had taken time to go through a mental thought process of information about Jesus, he might never have pushed away from the shore. The Holy Spirit was the one who brought Peter to the point of obedience. How do we initially come to know Jesus as Saviour? His Spirit must draw us. And that was exactly what happened with Peter. He knew that the man who was in his boat was much more than an everyday teacher. He was from God. Nothing is insignificant to God. Peter's journey into obedience began with a simple action. Jesus got into his boat and began teaching God's truth. Don't be tempted to think that Peter did not have a choice. He could have asked Jesus to leave, but he didn't. And his life was totally changed in a matter of moments. 
God wants to fill your life with good things. There are so many rewards, but for the most part, they are not like the rewards of this world. In this world, you may achieve a certain level of success, but it will fade. You can earn large sums of money, but it will not go with you to heaven. Only God's rewards are eternal. Only his blessings bring the peace and joy that you long to have. The way he operated in Peter's life is the same way he will operate in our life. You may not be standing on a shoreline, clenching, cleaning a bunch of nets, but without a doubt, there will be a time when he will come to you and say, move your boat out into deeper water and let down your nets for a catch. Are you paying attention? Are you in a place to hear his voice? Are you alert to his voice speaking to you? Do you recognize that this man, Jesus, is no ordinary man? He is the son of God and he speaks to you. Not only did Peter have to move his boat away from the shore, but he had to gather up all his nets, make sure they were folded and then ready to go. And then he had to raise his sails so he could go back out on the water. He left the shoreline wondering what would happen next. And when something marvelous happened, he was ready to change occupations. The issue is, what is God's will for your life? Peter realized what his will was for him, but you must come to a point where you know that you are living the life that he has planned for you to live. Once he had made this clear to you, and after you've made that decision, yes, I will obey him, I guarantee the feelings of worry will stop, the fretting ends and the, ch the chatter of what if, it just fades. You may face feelings of doubt again, and if you do, you may have to go back to God and ask him to encourage your heart and help you to recall the verses or words he gave you that brought you that initial hope and clarity. But today, are you prepared to let Jesus step into your boat, into your life, and take you into the unknown? The next time you hear the prompting of the Spirit saying, lay down your nets, it may come in many ways. It could be just as simple as God asking you to speak to the person in the queue at the shop or perhaps getting involved with things that are happening in the core or your church and offering your help. Today is God speaking to you. Are you alert enough to be able to hear his voice in asking you to be obedient in some area of service? What will your response be? I'll think about it or I'm too busy or will it be? Yes, Lord, use my boat for your work. I will let down my nets in obedience to you, whatever that may be, whatever that may lead. He is speaking to each of us all the time. You know, you could be the catalyst to change someone else's life and also your own. In our call, we will shortly be having new officers and with all new officers, they bring change. And I believe it's an exciting time for our church to have new leaders as it breathes new life and new challenges to the life of the core. And I'm sure they will bring new programs and new initiatives, and they may even choose to have a change of local leaders. So are you ready? Are you prepared to step up to the mark? Is God calling you to serve him within your core? Perhaps in a position that you would perhaps never have dreamt of? Are you open and alert to God's voice if he calls you to step up and take your place within the body to serve him? Are you ready when asked to say, yes, here I am, use me. Don't make the excuse of, oh, I've done it all before. Because you know there is no retirement in God. God does not look at age or ability. He only looks at availability. Will you make yourself available to him, whatever he may ask? Maybe there is someone watching today whom God has placed a call on your life, perhaps to be an officer, a territorial envoy or a divisional envoy. <laughs> How long have you been pretending that you can't hear that call? Or perhaps you've been putting up so many obstacles as to why you can't follow it through. Well, today, be alert to his voice and respond. It's Candidate Sunday. Be a candidate for obedience to God's calling today. Be alert to what he is saying to you. Be ready for change. Dare to be different. Amen. Our response song today is not so much a song of reflection, but one of declaration. 
as this is what is needed if we are serious about obeying God. Let us pray. Father God, your word clearly says that if we love you, we will obey you. And yes, it is hard to do. So often we choose to do things our way, pretending we can't hear your voice, saying no, not that way, this way. We want to be in control, seeking to gratify the desires of our heart and not yours. And then we come to you when things go wrong because of the wrong choices we have made. Father, today, help each one of us to listen to your voice and then to obey. For it's only as we listen to your voice that we can truly find joy, because our joy comes in knowing that we are in your will. Give us the boldness to step out in faith, knowing that God will never leave us or forsake us, and that you only want to bless us. All we have to do is trust you. Let there be a move of your Spirit upon us today that moves us to the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Father God, we ask all these things in and through your precious name. Amen. So, do you dare to be different? Do you dare to believe that God has got a plan for you, a new ministry for you? Yes, you. Age is no limit, whether young, middle-aged or in your senior years. God does not look at age, he's looking at availability. Are you available to God for him to use you? Have you been alert to what he is saying to you this morning? So let us not only sing this next song together, let the words speak to you.
the benediction. Living God, go with us on our journey of discipleship. Grant us faith to follow where you might lead, courage to step out into the unknown, grace to walk with humility, and commitment to travel on our journey's end, so that we may take up our cross and follow in the footsteps of Christ, to his praise and glory. Amen. God bless you all.